All right, I'm at Kiosk Lake. This time I'm with Bob, and I'm gonna go out on the water. As you know from my Tim Lake River or Tim River video, damaged my boat. It's been about two months since uh, the boat went in for repairs, and unfortunately I still don't have it back. Actually, I still don't even know what the repairs are gonna take or cost or any of that stuff, but that'll happen. Uh, at least I know the job will be done right. Their quality is usually pretty good with Swift. Uh, however, I do have a rental boat, so. I'm back in a Prospector 14. This one is green in shape, or color I mean. And it doesn't have the two-tone paint, which is interesting, so it should be like two pounds lighter. I'm also playing around with different ways of loading the gear and stuff like that. But either way, I'm just looking forward to having a, uh, an interesting trip. So. Crimea River? Not me. Crimea River? What is it? Crimea? Crimea? I never thought of that. <laughs> what, what's this song though? Cry Me Something. Alright, it's day two. We're currently at Kiosk or Kiosk Waskashi Lake or something like that. As you can see, Bob's packing up. I've got most of my stuff ready to go. It's almost 10 o'clock in the morning, so it's about normal for us on a trip, but we're not in a rush this trip. We'll just do our distance and enjoy ourselves and have a good time. Gives you a view of the campsite and kind of a nice view out of the water. It was dead calm about an hour ago and as you can see we're starting to get like 10 minutes ago. Yeah, it was pretty quick. We're starting to get the the smallest little white caps forming out there. So it'll be interesting to see how today goes. Today we've got to do two portages. I think one's at 1100 and the other one I think is a 600 or something. We'll see when we go. I'm not sure I'll be doing singles, but I might try. Mostly likely I'll be doing doubles. Hey guys. How many days were you out? How, many, how long were you out? Nice. Uh, numero uno. This is the one Bob forgot about. You know the 600? Yeah, that would be the one. On my radar now. Yeah, I think it was on my radar too. That first portage is done. I managed to single carry about 80% of it. And I could have done the whole thing, but I decided, eh, sounds like it's going to be a lot further. So I dropped the canoe, did the last two little hills, and I went back and got the canoe. Wasn't too bad. Enjoyed a longer uh, break. Well, Bob went back for his second load, and he did three trips. I guess I did probably one and a quarter, maybe. Got some paddle boulders, uh, borders. They're actually using inflatable paddle boards. They're on a six day trip. So they're doing a trip just like Bob and I are doing, but they're doing it standing up on a paddle board rather than sitting. When I asked them about it, they were telling me that uh, it helps with uh, some of the neck problems that one of them has and the other one has some back problems. And then over and above all of that, I guess it's helped them to encourage more ultralight camping so that they can carry it, which also enjoys their, their trip. And then they said they can see the, the actual the water better from higher up. They can see where the rocks are and things like that a lot better than, say, in a canoe or a kayak. It was kind of neat to, to meet them and talk to them. Well, here I am climbing a hill on... The 1300 meter portage from whatever lake to whatever lake. And this is a pretty good hill. That's for damn sure. Neat thing about singling is for every minute you go, you get two minutes of rest. If you want it. And it's not too buggy now, not compared to June. Well, 
1300 meter portage is gone. It is now behind us. And actually, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. So. This is a beautiful lake. What? I didn't think so. This bee free thing? Awesome. What's that? Ah, just resting a little here and there. Soaking in the atmosphere, man. Not tired, no. Maybe a bit tired. <laughs> Who, me or you? Me. Yeah, you did it a bunch, didn't you? Yeah, a couple. Yeah, I thought you did. This is the last lake of the trip, not the trip, of the day. Last portage is behind us. Now we just have to find a campsite, go for a swim. I'm definitely looking forward to a swim. And I uh, feel pretty good actually, because I managed to do, other than that, maybe a, a quarter of the first portage, the rest of them I've managed to do single portages today, which meant that basically, it's about a third of the distance instead of, two, instead of uh, the longer double portage which is two-thirds longer and that meant that even though I took a bunch of breaks I still was making really good time compared to someone doing a double so that worked out really well and every day my pack should get lighter because the as I eat the food of course the pack will gradually lose weight burn the stove fuel stuff like that so what I had today should be the hardest singles from a weight perspective it doesn't mean I won't have harder terrain and stuff but Worked out all right, so I'm happy about that. This is actually the most fun fishing I've had in years. For my seasons. Hey, look! <laughs> Other than that little bit where I thought I was going over my ass, it worked. Oh, another day, another wait for Bob. You know how it is. That's the way these trips go, right? Get up early, have some breakfast, watch Bob, you know, piss away the morning. <laughs> Actually, I'm just joking. We're doing fine. We're ahead of our scheduled 11 o'clock departure, I think. the end of our first portage for today a little bit swampish at the end but oh, okay we'll be on this lake for a bit and then we have one more portage and we're done uh, the next one's a 610 we just did what was that one a 260 or something 345, 345. we just did a 345 the uh, second wheel the second hill <laughs> is a wonderful one when you're coming this way but other than that it was no big deal uh, I managed to keep going with my singles 
and I had a snack and now we're getting going again. I don't see a lot of hope to the right. I think I'm going this way though. And hey, there's the old cabin or something. Oh yeah, okay, that's What the hell was that? Oh, Is it really? Yeah. I caught one. Come here, bud. Come here. There, you got off. Good for you. <laughs> I don't know how the hell this thing is. Yeah, I'll stop for a second. Come on. That's a trout, I think. Huh? That's Well, I got it right in the gill. So, this is day three. We're at our camp. On, I think it's called Mouse Lake and you can see I've got my hammock set up between the two trees right near the water's edge no really good place to put the hammock bit of a mess on the ground here and Bob's got his tent up top interesting about this place is that we've got a big mess we uh, have to eat supper and stuff still so we're just setting up for that you can see our water filter, gravity water filter. One of our stoves is on the ground. What's interesting about this place though is there must have been something here in the past a long time ago. Don't know what, but if you look carefully, you can see these metal bands. So there's a metal band right down there on the ground. Okay, that one's really rusty, it's old. Here's another one right here. And then there's yet another one. And then over in here even more, there's, we don't know what this is. We thought it might be out of an old, uh, an old stove or something. Anyway, around us is an open pasture area. So maybe it was a farm or a depot location at some point in the past, don't know. End of it for a campfire tour or camp tour. The other interesting thing, I'll just go back to this, my hammock here. There's an old style no cans allowed sign. And there's some really old cans. I think there were whiskey bottles and stuff back there too. I can't remember where we saw them. Oh yeah, right here. These are glass bottles. Look at that. Definitely needs to be packed out of here. And so there's the there's the sign. That's a pretty old one because most of the time they're not that brownish color anymore. They don't believe in subtle anymore, I don't think. It's too bad. And then down here, old cans and stuff. See? Anyway, that's it. Enjoy. Here, I'm standing here in my fucking underwear, too. I, that's your choice, not mine. All right, so Bob's showing us how to hang clothesline up, and you can see he he definitely needs it. But if you don't want to bring uh, twisties with you, um, what are those things called? Clothespins. You don't want to bring clothespins with you, then you do this technique that he's uh, doing here. Does that mean I have to take off my underwear at the end and hang them up? No, I wouldn't. So? I don't think anybody's ready to see that. Now, Bob is a master of knots. Oh, yeah, he can knot a rope better than anybody without even doing anything but looking at it. <laughs> Look at 
Alrighty. <laughs> He's a, a master at not making. <laughs> okay, so. And you just twist it a bunch of times? Yeah. Twist. Twist. It wants its moment in YouTube history. Yeah. There we go. It'll get it. It's called a fucking fire. <laughs> <laughs> so what? Uh, Stay yeah. tuned for our campfire when that twig goes up in smoke. I don't know how to get it even unless you do it all the way down. No, that's okay. Good enough. Mm -hmm. So as you can see there, just pull it apart like you're going to put something on it, Bob, when you're ready. So you just tweak it apart, and then you just snug it in there, and there you go. No clothespins needed, just a slightly longer and rope. If it's uh, that fit right, then you take it over, and you can loop it over. and Do another one. Hook it in there. Right on. Corner in there. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Thanks, Bob. Uh, here we are, just getting ready to get going. I think we're well ahead of schedule today. Yeah, it's 10.04. Uh, ahead of schedule, I'm right along No, you still got 40, 56 minutes to get your boat and your gear in the water. I might make it. You will, you'll make it. Anyway, we're heading off. Biggest portage of the trip, I think, today. Uh, 1.7, 1.8, something like that. Assuming the signs are matching the map, because so far two or three of them haven't. They've been longer on the signs than on the maps. And then we go to Big Thunder. We have another big portage tomorrow. 1.4, 1.5. And then we have a rest day. So, yeah, looking forward to that. It's been a good trip so far. It's been nice. We've been in earlier than normal. I think we've basically made it to camp every day by about 3. Four at the latest. I think it's 3. And... Done a little fishing every day. Haven't caught a big enough fish to eat yet, but I've caught some fish. That's good. We caught some minnows. Yeah, caught some minnows. Mm. Waiting for Bob. Often this is when music plays. <laughs> Well, that was a 1.7, or yeah, 1.7K, 1 1,705 or 1,750, depending on which sign, portage behind us. Yay! Now, one more, yep, we go down and do a little creek travel, and then we uh, have a I think 190 or something, maybe a 200 meter portage. And then we're done. Then we go to camp. The rate we're going will be in camp probably by two ish, maybe three, something like that. I don't think it's very long. Good water level in here. Water levels are good. Not like what Luke and I went through. Man, the Tim River in June when it was low water, that was something. Well, that's it for today in terms of paddling portaging we are at our campsite well i think it's right there i don't know when i come around the corner i am tuckered at 1.7 and a hilly there's a, it's not a hilly it's like one hill or maybe two but it goes up a good sleep steep slope so you notice it especially if you do it twice because that's the first double i've done on the trip there's a 135, so it's not very big. We tried doing the river part, and 
there's at least a four foot high beaver dam further down so we turned around at that point kind of wonder if that's all we had to do to get in though I'm at the beach. <laughs> yeah, right there. It's not huge, but it's a beach. <laughs> and it's sunny. Yeah. And I'm swimming. I've been thinking about this all day. And the last two portage ends did not look good for that. Definitely. Oh. There's another spot we could go up here. Yeah, I saw that. It looks like this one looks rough, but I think we go up there on that okay. side trail. Yeah. It might actually be easier. Just park next to me if you want. Go swim it. Sorry, not my phone. Okay, we're here. Ah, oh, I couldn't wait to get in this water. Oh, there's a little beach too. That's a big enough beach for me. Yep, it's plenty. So far, this campsite was the best one of the trip. Uh, we just ended, we got here yesterday, like two o'clock or maybe even before that, and had two swims, went fishing, did some exploring in the, the swampy areas back there, found a little mini river, sort of. Had a good sleep, good campfire, lots of food to eat. So, and because of the, the way the, the hill is, there's a bit of a hill, so any breeze you do get goes right up there and funnels the bugs away, so. This campsite is awesome, especially since it's between a 1.4 kilometer portage and a 1.7 kilometer portage. So, 
it's a nice campsite. I'd come back here again. It's a, it's easily the best one of the trip so far. Well, we're here. We got here by 11.02, so we got through that portage. I'm going to guess 45 minutes or something. Probably faster. I know in my case, yeah, it must have been faster than that, maybe half an hour. Either way, every time I went to take my break, you know, the walk one minute, take two minutes rest if you want to, because I'm doing a single and Bob's doing double. Well, every time I went to take a break, I got mobbed by bugs, so it's kind of like, yeah... I got about 30 seconds break and then off I went. So I got through pretty quick. And then when I got to the end here, walked right into the water after taking the pack off and stuff and went for a swim for 10 minutes, which was awesome. Now I'm going to fish. Bob's finishing off his second pass. He'll probably be here in my guess is 15 minutes or so. And then we'll, we'll go and find ourselves a camp. And then we have a rest day. So it's going to be nice. Looking forward to that. Uh, looks like we've selected our our site and uh, oh, 122 in the afternoon man we're doing really good this trip for early early arrivals I think we sort of I'm trying to remember but I think we did a planning rule this time where we said no more than either three portages in a day or 2,000 meters and sometimes, depending on the portage, it might be slightly above or slightly under the 2,000, so there's some flex there. I think we've actually done that, and as a result, the way it's worked out, we've been in camp a lot earlier, which has meant more swimming, more fishing, more sleeping, more eating, all of those things. It's been very restful, other than the bugs, and the bugs aren't bad, not like the previous trip. So, it's been good. This is a pretty lake. Time that I got behind me is on a 12 day trip, and uh, they're doing quite a long haul as well. But they're, they're going an extra four days longer than us, and he's out fishing, he hasn't had any luck today either. What did you say? Nothing to do? Yeah. Oh, a water bag needs filling. <laughs> you always go firewood, you could get swimming, you could have a nap. Yeah, firewood at all. <laughs> this is when a book to read would be nice, but I don't have one. Well, I have my old one. I already read it though. I might be reading it before the day's out. All right, we're going to do some uh, self-rescue uh, practice and training. Should be interesting. Uh, this is supposed to balance it out a bit. Personally, I don't think this matters a hell of a lot. Here we go! Oh, I can! 
Hey, hey, Sally, up the blue. What is that? Can I crawl in? Now try not to stand on the bottom, although it's hard not to. Okay. Now there's two techniques. You want to do the one technique? You could bring that on. I'm getting plenty of flotation in these boats, eh? Oh, you're floating. Now you start bailing. It's like a fucking hot tub, but you're good. Oh, yeah, your boat's about four feet. Four feet on you. We might want to oh, yeah. check. I have a feeling we better check the flotation tap. But if this is the level of flotation in these boats, yeah, good luck. <laughs> Well, I've got some we can play around with. But I'm going to go and empty mine out, and then I'm going to try again. Because you, you're not, you might get, yeah, that's about what's going to happen. Trying to get it out of the water as much as you can. And I know that you try to do this while you're swimming, right? Watch out, I'm going to throw it right at you. Not on purpose. And then once it, now don't get in yet, don't get in yet. Huh? Yeah, you can do it, but you'd have to have... Let me throw this bag up first. Try and go in more. Yeah, good There, now that should balance it. Try that. So you kind of spring up. Well, you got to kind of spring. There you go. Oh, yeah, you got too much power and you're doing a dive. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> That's good. Oh, fuck, no. <laughs> oh, fuck. What'd you do? I'm not going to have kids again for the rest of my fucking life. <laughs> yeah. I'm dead. I'm just fucking drowned in the middle of the fucking lake. All right, now that we've had the pet talk, drag it underneath the boat. Okay, so when you're coming up, you want to kind of be like this and then as if you're springing onto the boat, okay? But here's the other thing. You're holding on. Don't hold for this. Okay, then reach, reach for the gun. Reach for the torque. The torque. There, go for the torque. Kick, kick, kick. There you go. Up, up, up. Kick, kick, kick. There you go. You're in. You're in. You're in. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good job. Tell him I spilled him with that. I'm in. Oh, I got you. Yeah, I spilled him with that. You're in. You're up. You're up. <laughs> <laughs> I did not do that. Just so you know. I'll show you the video. It was not me. <laughs> you're in. You're in. Okay. Now slide your back feet in while moving your head towards the center of the boat. There you go. There you go. There you go. You got it. A little bit more center. Go down. Do your thing. There you go. You got it. Down, down. There you go. Keep your head down. Good. Good. Think about how much harder it is to do it in the middle of the lake. All right, Bob and I just finished doing uh, rescue stuff. We spent about, I think, about an hour, eh? And during that time, we tipped. Uh, we tried doing the dry bag entry, the entry without a dry bag full of water. Um, we discovered with pack boats, really Bob discovered this first, putting the pack seat down into its door to weight position makes it significantly easier to enter, enter the boat once you're in the water. Uh, for my boat, the Prospector 14, for my body weight anyway, at least with this, this one, it's a rental, uh, the buoyancy tanks I don't think are enough. You can kind of get in it but it sinks like right underneath me unless it's completely bone dry on my entry. And personally, I like a little bit more than that. I've been in whitewater boats. I know they have better flotation bags and all the rest of it, but they don't sink like that. You have a chance of getting in and going. Uh, beyond that, we did boat over boat rescues. Bob managed to do a re-entry into the water after getting into the boat where he banged his head. So you gotta watch that when you're getting in, into boats. It was kind of hard to brace the other boat when you're alongside each other, to brace each other so the other guy can get back in his boat. That's something you gotta work on and try. We tried doing paddles and stuff like that too. Uh, a bunch of different things we tried, but all in all, I'm glad we did it. Yeah, we're just getting ready to take off. Oh, yeah. 
had a good rest day yesterday. Did a bunch of stuff. Swam, fished, caught a fish. Uh, rock bass, I think it was. Caught a clamshell, too. And, uh, fished. I think I went swimming like 17 times. I counted. I don't know why, but I did. And then we did self-rescue uh, practice as well, which we haven't done for a while, so that was good. Learned a few things from it. And had a breakfast. We got three portages today, a 170, I think a 130, and then an 805 or something. And then we're parked, and then tomorrow we head out. So tomorrow's our last day. It's been pretty good here. Uh, I'm just amazed at how much I've gone swimming. Probably the most I've swam in any trip, and it's been good. <laughs> the flowers living on the... Yeah. That's cool. Not very deep in here. Yeah. Bob is having a rough day today. His, uh, he went to go to the washroom and as he took off his pants, the belt's kind of a bit loose. The knife slipped off and uh, slipped right into the <laughs> the thunder box. So now he's thinking about how much does he really like that knife and is it worth grabbing? Uh, yeah. What a day he's having. Lucky him. Hope I don't have that kind of a day. Put that fucking rock there. Anyway, I thought I took the smart route. A lot of people have found that rock over the years, though. Pretty sure we go straight across and up. Yeah, I think so. I gotta look at the map. Yeah, I think so. Should be two campsites on our left somewhere. Then I can't see them. This one might have one. Bob and I saw this lovely beach from a distance, and since it's a hot day, it really is, we decided to have a swim. Plus, we're in for a creek, and we're not sure we'll have swimming when we get there. So, there's a second reason to go. Anyway, near the beach. It's kind of nice. I'm wondering if maybe it used to be a campsite years and years ago and maybe gotten overused because if you look around it's got beautiful beautiful scenery it would be a great campsite if it was available probably everyone would go to it though it was nice oh uh, there's the second uh falls for the second maple creek portage uh, the 130 and next one we have is i think an 805 or something Nice. Nicely done. Portaging is hot work today. That one has a, a kick butt hill. Uh, I think Bob 
filmed it, so hopefully I'll put it in the video. We're on uh, Maple Creek, and thankfully we're going downstream instead of upstream, because there is a monster climb that if it was raining at all or anything wet, it'd be a stream. <laughs> Bob is just glad I just had to come down at once. Bob had to come down it twice and go back up at once, and uh, he said even with no pack on him, it was just killer. Look at this frog. It's cool. Here. Hi, froggy. Sorry, bud. Oh, I'm not gonna bother you. Anyway, Maple Creek. That is a pretty waterfall over there. Maple Creek waterfall. Yeah, another one. That's on the end of the What's that? It's like, it's like the Tim, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's like the Tim. Yeah. Except I haven't seen any moose or anything. It's been a long day today. We started out at the Rabbles. We checked out the two sites on Maple Creek and with the heat and the bugs and all that stuff. It's not that buggy, but it's at night you get this humid time where it lasts for about three hours before you finally go to sleep. And when you're near a lake, it cools off pretty good. We weren't confident we'd have that near the, near the creek or the, yeah, Maple Creek. Went swimming a lot. It's a hot, humid day today, so got through the last portage it was a 900 meter I'll add up the distance later but I, I think we did at least at least three kilometers singles which means Bob probably did about nine kilometers doubles and we're just heading around across kiosk now we're probably gonna head right back to the car we'll be leaving about a day early but uh, it's been a good trip I know I've had a good time and Bob's had a good time and, and that's what it's all about didn't catch my big fish dinner but I did catch a lot of fish, for me, a lot of fish. And probably, without a doubt, just any one day of this trip, I swam more than probably any other trip. And on this trip, this trip by itself, I swam more than all my other trips combined, except maybe my whitewater trip. So, oh no, it's been a good time. It's, uh, we had sunshine, I think we had, uh, two minutes of sprinkles or something one day and that was it so so really not too bad at all Bob's just over there he's finishing getting ready to go and then we'll get out of here
Talk to you in a bit. It's Noble Endeavors coming to you. Get ready for some escapades and adventures too. Enjoy the journey and the fun we're bringing.